Amen. We thank you, Brother Tamoya, for that wonderful prelude. We will now have our hymn, which you could turn to the prompters and we will hum together. Amen. And revive us again. Let's sing this old hymn together. worship. Brother Ken will be reading the part of the people and I will read the part of the leader. Praise the Lord. O merciful Father, in compassion for your sinful children, you sent your son Jesus Christ to be the savior of the world. Grant to us peace to heal and to lament and made it necessary for him to suffer and to die for our salvation. Help us by self-denial prayer and meditation to prepare our hearts for deeper penitence and a better life. And give us a true longing to be free from sin, through the deliverance won by Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now have our song of praise. Let's rejoice! Let's rejoice! 
has given us the city he's given us the land so we're going to claim that city and that land amen welcome all for joining us this morning the 13th sunday after pentecost august 30th already can you believe it the year has just flown by <laughs> and i'm so happy to be here in this house this morning since i haven't been here since uh, uh that little lady corona came to town but it's so good to be here so good to see your faces <laughs> so good to be here <laughs> praise god so um welcome all again welcome all uh, that are watching on facebook all that are on zoom hello everyone good morning to you thank you for joining us this morning i'm going to just do a brief run through of the announcements this morning um just so you know, you could always join us on Zoom, right? For those of you who are already gone, tell your friends that they could join us on Zoom. The code, uh, the meeting code is in, uh, on, available on our website at uh, www.fumcmvny.org. And also, you could book your seats here at Eventbrite, and the link is also available online at the website I just read, which is www.fumcmvny.org. Uh, special thanks to the technical team. I This is kind of different for me, so uh, I thank you, Brother Ron, and <laughs> for so... He's very vigilant in making sure that I get what it is that I needed to do. And um, I, I got the rundown. I was like, wow, this is going to be different, right? So I can't just burst into song. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll sing it in my heart. Um, so in, in an effort to keep us all safe and to follow the guidelines, we're making sure that we wear a mask. You're welcome to join us. Bring your mask. Come in. And we will experience other forms of worship besides um, vocal worship all the time. So. So um, thank you for that, for the team, Dr. Dion, thank you, Raymond, and, and, and Brother Watson, who's not here today, but you all are doing a wonderful job, as I've been vigilantly watching online, and to see you guys run through, it's, it's, it takes a lot. So we should definitely pray, praise God for them. Amen. Uh, so... I wanted to do things. I just wanted to say happy birthday to the people who are having August birthday. Who are those people? Are they here? I know at least one is here. <laughs> happy birthday to you, Sister Velma. And I believe we have uh, Sister Reed, who also has a birthday. And so we want to just say happy birthday to you guys. We know that you weren't having a party this year. It's okay. Double the party next year. <laughs> right? God's bless you to see this amount of years when so many have gone on. So we're grateful to be among the living when it's a time of great death. So praise God for your birthdays. Um, I wanted to touch on the uh, open house um, that's usually occurring in the beginning of September. But as you know, with all the guidelines and all that's gone on with the Rona, as I call her, uh, it's suspended this year to keep everyone safe and make sure that we are being uh, our brother's keepers and doing the right thing in accordance to the guidelines we were given. So uh, look out for more announcements. I'm sure Reverend Branch will be giving you updates on any further procedures from here on out. And I just, I wanna take this moment to give a shout out to Reverend Branch, wherever you may be, Reverend Branch. Um, God bless you. It's so happy to watch her on Sundays, blessed woman of God. And just wanted to say that real quick. Um, remember to donate to the food pantry. It's a great time of need in our nation and right here in Mount Vernon as well and surrounding areas. So bring, food <laughs> people are without jobs and they're struggling at this time and as the people of god we are to be the hands and feet of god so let us bring forth whatever we can to support our food pantry to make sure that it is fully stocked okay for more information you know who to go to brother gums uh, brother commons and let's just 
push forth in, in making sure that we're helping our neighbors, right? Or the, when, when asked, what is the greatest commandment? Christ said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, with everything within you, basically, paraphrasing, of course, and to love your neighbor. So let us love our neighbor, and we love them by pro helping to um, provide for the needs that they have. I also wanted to touch base on how you could help this wonderful place continue to do all the things that we do here at first uh, by bringing in your, your tithes and your offerings. As you know, we are not doing the quintessential tithes and offerings, so you could give online. Everything has gone digital. You could also drop it off here at the church, 227 East Lincoln. Uh, checks. Uh, what other ways? You could do electronic payments from your bank. You could do it from your debit or credit card. Just make sure that you are bringing in your tithes and offerings and you could follow all the information on the screen if you are able to, or you could also go to the website that I mentioned, which is www.fumcmvny.org. And there are links there that you could follow. Or if you're you know, a little old school and you like to write checks and just drop it off at the church. There's a mailbox right around the corner. If there are no further announcements, let us go forth with the service. And I believe my good brother is going to come up and give the prayer of illumination. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 23 through 26, and 45b. God's faithfulness to Israel. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all of his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and his judgments he has uttered. O oh, offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Verses 23 through 26. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses. Praise the Lord. Our New Testament lesson comes from the epistle of Romans, chapter 12, verse 9 through 21. Marks of the true Christian. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Amen. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. 
Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The words of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will have a musical selection by Brother Guy. Help me today. Sh- 
show me the way one day at a time. That's all we can do, right? We are not in control of time, but we serve a God that is. We serve a God that is in time and outside of time. And, and it's amazing that that's the song because that's part of the reason why I chose my topic. Uh, what is on your list? Because of a lot of us, we create lists with time frames in mind. Okay? By the time I'm X age, I will be doing this. By the time I'm X age, I'll be doing that. So, and we're seeing how much that can change in the drop of a hat. Because by this time, uh, according to my plans in January, I'd be on vacation. <laughs> I'm vacationing at home currently. And so with all that has gone on, um, illnesses and the unrest in this country and with us having to conform a, a bit how we normally do things i just wanted to encourage you today that you don't just have to praise god in one way in the hebrew they taught us that there's many ways we could praise god there's different words for praise and i'm going to share some with you today while we're in this setting because as it is right now, we are not worshiping in our normal facet. So we know about tauda praise, which in Hebrew is thanksgiving. And that's usually where people sing and, and, and rejoice. And we know that we have to temper that a little bit, but it's um, tauda is also where offering and sacrifice of thanksgiving comes into play. But we know about the word yada, which is praising with the hands. So while we can't uh, all sing as a congregation together, we could use our hands to worship. We could clap, we could raise our hands. That's different ways to show God that you could praise. Because praising, if praising is what you do, then your entire being can praise God, not just your mouth. We know about the Baroque praise, which means to bless. And that praise is both ways. It's God blessing us and it's us blessing God. And usually in Hebrew, they do that by bowing and showing reverence to God. We know about Shabbat praise, which means to shout. And we can Shabbat under our masses, not here. <laughs> we could definitely Shabbat at home today. We know about Zamar praise, which is usually praises on the string instruments. And of course, we, we know about halal praise. Halal praise is uh, kind of like hilarity and, and, and excitement and, and a lot of jumping around. And, and a tehillah praise is a combination of those kind of praises. So today, I wanted to give you that tidbit of information and point to you that while you can praise God in one way, there's many ways that you can. And to encourage you to continue worship because the Bible tells us God inhabits the praises of his people. So if we want to be in his presence today, let us have him, give him a praise. Give him a Zamar praise, a Barak praise. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to join together. And while we're not physically touching God, we are in agreement that our hearts are, are open to hear your word today. Lord, let me decrease while you increase. And let whatever you have to say to me today be said unto the people just as you meant it. We thank you for each and every one here, each and every one online, Facebook or Zoom. And we thank you for all the hands that help to make this possible. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what's on your list? I, and that's under the heading uh, preparing or organizing yourself in God. Because like I said before, we all make lists, right? New Year's resolution, how many of us keep them? 
for two months, right? And we are fervently in the gym for about mm, two weeks. And then for the rest of the year, the gym has been taking our monies and we have not attended. How many of us say we're gonna change the way we do X, Y, or Z at the beginning of the year? See, each January, uh, I'm usually on a fast from December all the way, and some of us here also uh, participated in that fast where we are 21 days. Good Lord. It's a rough 21 days. The beginning seven days, you're, you want to die. <laughs> it's like, just feed me anything. Give it to me via IV. <laughs> I want an IV burger. But by God's grace, we go through the 21 days, which simply soup. Trusting that God won't leave us for dead and that it, we're going to believe that man is going to fall from the sky, but we're going to keep the word and the commitment we made to keep that fast. That's one of the things that's on our list, right? And we do that. But after we come out of that fasting period, how do we construct our list to live our lives as Christians? Do we just go by any random guideline? Do we just adapt to the worldly lists that are there? Do we always write a list? Oh, you know what? I'm going to retire by 37. I'm going to, you know, get a new job by next year that pays me $2 million a year. Sounds good, right? By the way, if you know that job, I'm available. <laughs> I'll, I'll apply. But I want us to focus more on the list that we do not make. And that's the list that we should anchor more spiritually. Brother Gums, uh, thank you, Brother Gums, for reading the psalm. If you notice uh, the psalm, and especially uh, had a special language, like it was listing things, hate evil, cling to what is good, that, those are lists. And so while I was reading it, it was coming so clear to me that God makes lists for us. But how closely are we following those lists? My grandma always say, that uh, when God writes, when, when man writes, God erases. Or in, in, in the Jamaican dialect, when man are right, God are robot. <laughs> and she told me that so many times, and it stuck with me, as this year, like I said, my list did not include corona. I don't think anyone wrote a list that they needed a pandemic this year. If you did, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I thought that saying was so funny as a child, but as I grew up, I realized how wise it was. Because we never really see the wisdom of our elders until we're at a certain stage in life, then we're like, ah, oh, so that's what she meant. So I see so much wisdom in that statement because now we are forced to live in a new reality. None of our lists, I don't think, included this reality of pandemic and violent outbursts and um, multiple cases of racial tension and all the things that are going on with this nation at this current stage. I don't think any of us wrote for that. But God has a list. How do you know God's list? By reading the word. We just got that list as Brother Gums read the word. We didn't make it up. It's, it is written. And I like that. I like that phrase, it is written. Christ says it so often, for it is written. It means that we don't have to figure out our list on our own. For it is written. So when you are having trouble getting by and wondering what it is that does say the Lord, you don't necessarily have to worry. You don't have to worry at all. For it is written. So... Now, I am not saying in any way, shape, or form that God wanted hundreds of people to die by the corona, but in this moment, a lot of us have gone back to basics. I've seen so many more people gardening and eating natural foods. I see so much more people uh, tending to their health and wellness. It gave us time to spend with our families. So out of, and, and there's a song by Kirk Franklin called Blessing in the Storm. There's a blessing in the corona storm. How many of us, when there was no corona, didn't have time to even see our neighbors? How many of us had time to care about certain things that we now care about? How many of us had time to really invest and look into what our children are doing? I can tell you that before corona, I was running around like a headless chicken. 
And when Corona came, it forced me to sit and be still. And, 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 the, and the other end of that be still was be still and know that I am God. Because it's not by my might or your might or by your power that God is God. He just is God. So in the being still, I started to grasp at the things of God. I spent nights and days when I wasn't in the jumpsuit and the mask and the shield, sweating bullets, <laughs> knowing God reading his word so that he could give me the list because my list clearly is inadequate. My list clearly doesn't cover what I need. But why would God's list be better for me? Because he knows the plans he has for me. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, those are plans of success for your future. That is written. It is written that God has a plan for success. How do you achieve that success depends on the list you choose to follow. But I'm going to say this. If you buy a car, say you have a Toyota, you are not going to take that Toyota to Mercedes, right? I hope not, because then you cannot put that uh, Mercedes parts in the Toyota. It wouldn't work. However, so you have to go to the original maker of the car. And God is our original maker. So who would have the best list for us than our maker? He has the manual. He has the manuscript. So why would we turn to anywhere else and blogs and et cetera for our guidance, for our list? Amen. I see so many of us being tossed to and fro by what so-and-so and he or she say on the internet. And I realize that we get that way because we have fallen apart from the list that God has given us. Amen. So I, as I'm talking, I, I, I wrote so many things down, but it's almost as if God says, push that aside and, and kind of just go with what I told you to say, young lady. And, and, and I always say that, you know, I'm learning how to be an obedient being and not so sacrificial. Sacrifice hurts. <laughs> sacrifice is painful. Um, but obedience is so much better. Obedience is better than sacrifice. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. Not maybe added or, you know, I'll think about it. Those are very strong words. God is saying, if you seek me and my face, and that is also a list, and there's an order to the list because God is a God of order. Seek me first, seek my face and my righteousness, and then, me first and then, me first and then, me first and then. How many of us make our list and at the top of it has nothing to do with God? Is he a priority on your list? I can tell you that after all the years of fasting for the new year, I went back to my list as to be transparent myself and to see what I have been doing in my life. And I look on those lists and God is not the first thing on my list. He's almost as an afterthought. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. And by next year, yeah, I want to climb the ranks. I don't want to finish school. And I want to do this. And then, and, oh, yeah, be more spiritual. And I said, wow, no wonder things have gone awry. I didn't seek God first. And then I did. And then ask God to bless what I've already done. <laughs> and he's probably like, oh, uh, that was not my plan for you, Anisha. How many of us do that? How many of us have stepped out of the way and then when things blow up in our face, we're like, God, bless it. Bless this man that I dragged in here to be my husband, but he knows nothing about God. But I like him though. Bless him, Jesus. <laughs> do we check in with God? When we pray, do we listen? Or do we just give God our list? God, thank you for this. Thank you for this. Yeah, I'm going on a venture. God, give me the opportunity to excel and do this thing. But maybe that's not the area where he called you to excel. 
Maybe that's the area you chose to excel in. And now that you've gone down that path, you're saying, bless it, God, for I have chosen this thing. And, and it's large, and I, and I need your blessing, God. But did you consult with him? Is that where he told you to go? I say many times that um, when asked to speak at a church or, or anywhere that, hey, you know what? I'm like a Gideon in some aspect, <laughs> All right? Uh, who, me, the least of the least of the tribe of Manasseh? But then I remember maybe two years ago, I gave word of qualifying the called. So it's not in your qualifications that's God, that God will work and bless you. Yes, what you're doing naturally and passionately may be the thing that he has called you to do. However, if you're thinking that it's because you're a doctor or lawyer or nurse or a cook that, oh, God is going to use this thing that is naturally talented to me or given to me to do wonderful works in the world, you may be wrong. Check your list. Check your list. Because while I am a nurse by trade, I've done things that I never thought that God would even call me to do. One of them standing here today. I would say, God, but there's so many more qualified people. They're eloquent. They have degrees and such. And then I remember my own sermon that God gave to me, that he qualifies the called. You cannot have enough qualifications, worldly qualifications, to do the work of God. He just calls upon you based on the plans he has for you, for it is written. Now, we limit God. We limit God when we make these lists. Did he not say he has for us far or more exceedingly and abundantly, more than we can ever ask or even imagine or think? But we limit him because we put... We are humans and we have tangibilities, right? We experience the world through our senses, through touching and feeling and tasting. But have we tasted and seen that the Lord is good? Have we? Because when we limit God to our tangibilities, we're saying he can do no more than we can do. But is that true? No, it's not. In other lists in the Bible, they tell us about the greatness of God and his grace and mercy. And we know God's grace because we are out in here and we do some things. We think some things that we know are not godly. And yet, God keeps us. And yet, he loves us. And yet, he carries us from glory to glory. So we are undeserving as it is. But yet, we put God at the bottom of our list. And uh, in no way am I saying that this is an easy road to travel. It's a narrow road, right? And it's hard because even Christ came to this earth and when he felt the pain of humanity, he says, take this cup from me. So is it wrong to feel overwhelmed? Is it wrong to feel under pressure? No because we are spiritual beings in this human flesh. And we know that this flesh is sinful. So imagine having a little light inside the darkness, and that light is really wanting to come out. And I think the Apostle Paul said the things he wanted to do, he did not do. So we face those struggles every day as humans. But I want to encourage us today to keep pushing forth, because what the enemy does is he deceives us. He wants us to continue to wallow in the wrongs we've done and continue to put them on the list of reasons why you don't qualify. He wants to continue to remind us because he too has a list. And we know that his list includes dis destruction and theft he come and murder. Uh, the Bible tells us that he comes to steal to kill, and to destroy. So our list should be very mindful while we're making those lists that those things also exist in our earthly realities. Hate evil, cling to what is good. 
how do we explore what is good? We read the word of God for it is written. How many of us really indulge in in-depth Bible studies? How many of us, after we're given a word on Sunday, check that word in the middle of the week? Some of us only come on Sundays. Some of us are Sunday Christians, as some people would say. And I remember an old song, a reggae song that said, they sit in the church on Sunday thinking about who they're going to slay on Monday. What is on your list? Does your list, and, and it's, not, not, it's not anything that's grand or great sometimes, it's the small things. For example, are we grateful for where we are at this moment? Do you know that God takes you to moments in order to teach you something? Are you grateful for that job? Child, mm. there's times when you, you go to work and it seems like all the pressures of the world is just on you. And you're like, why am I even here? But you didn't get the lesson. Did you get the lesson that was on the list? For it is written. And I think I may have said this before, but the journey from Egypt to Israel was a short one. It was a short journey. 40 years later, the Israelites were in the desert. What was on their list? Were they seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? And then? Or were they just going about broadly, doing what they feel is best in their humanity and tangibility? Did they limit God like some of us do today? Are we showing grace like God shows grace? Are we speaking kindly to those among us who are less fortunate? Are we treating people with the love of God? Are we loving our neighbors as we do ourselves? I dare say, do we love ourselves? Because you can't love your neighbor as yourself if you don't love yourself. You have to start with self-love. And God, if God is love, then that means loving God. Amen? Do we believe that God is our provider? Do we seek the face of Jehovah Jireh? Or do we go out providing for ourselves the things we feel we need that won't last? Do we put aside our time with God, our Bible study, our prayer time, our church time to do other things on our list so that our week can be smoother, so we could have a smooth week, but then we X God out of our plannings? Do we make other people our objects and idols instead of God? Because we've missed Bible study, we've missed church, we've missed prayer meeting, we've missed everything. But we're making sure that husband or wife or spouse or child is covered and well-rounded in the world, but not in the spirit. God is calling us out today as Christians. We don't have any time to play games. The world needs to hear the word of God. The gospel needs to be spread. We need to know that the gospel does not have a color. The gospel does not have a race. The gospel is not Republican, Democrat, or independent. The gospel is the kingdom. And in the kingdom, all are welcome. But if we are using our biases and things that separate us to not preach the gospel, check your list. For it is written. It is written that we should go out into the world preaching the gospel. Now we have this platform of Facebook and Zoom and other ways to reach people. Are we using it wisely? Are we reaching out to folks that are sick? How do we treat someone who cannot give us anything back in return? As read in Psalms 105, it says, the low amongst us. And low may not be a financial standing. Low may not be a socioeconomic group. Low may just mean that that person just needs love. Maybe that person just needs you to say hello. When we pass someone on the street who is deemed less fortunate, how do we react with that person? Do we shoo them, get away from my car? Maybe they don't smell as nice as some of us do this morning. Maybe uh, they can't communicate as effectively as some of us who have been educated 
do, but how does God say we should react to that person? Did Jesus not go from place to place, sitting with the outcasts among us? Did he not speak to those who the high priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees have neglected to minister to? Did he not sit with the woman who was so uh, ungodly that they would take the scenic route to get away from the town in where she lived? Was it not our Lord and Savior that gave us the protocol via a list? For it is written. How do we spend our time? I know a lot of us are, are TV junkies, right? And we have to tune into XYZ program at a certain time. But what if that's the only time you have to maybe do a Bible study or join in with a small group? But we, we can't because uh, love and hip hop is on. <laughs> we can't because, uh, you know, we're watching Ninja Warrior. And, and I'm listing these because I'm talking about me. In, in, in spirit of transparency, right? How many times or have we been too tired to talk to God and pray to him, but we're not, never ever too tired to watch a two hour program on the television? Hmm. The eloquent and, and, and brilliant Dr. Reverend Miles Monroe once said that we are a product of how we spend our time. So if you're spending your time unwisely, then you too are deemed unwise. God has given us 24 hours in the day. How much do we devote to him during that 24 hours? Are we too busy to receive a word from God? <laughs> are you writing your list on the backing of the solid rock on which we stand? Have you elevated others to worship level? Have we put celebrities and all that they are about ahead of your one and only true living God? Every year that we make a resolution is one of those resolutions to be better in God. Do you write down the things that you hear from him when you pray? Do you even listen back for a word when you do pray? I beckon to us today that while you're writing down how much you want to get married and go to school and elevate and be uh, a doctor, a lawyer, a chef, a musician, how much you want to be retired by a certain age, how much you want to own a business or a home. As much as you write those things and you plan for them, you take classes. Some of us have gone into real estate. Some of us are changing jobs in this troubled time. How many more times have you written down a word from God? How many more times have you given him more than five minutes or two minutes before you've fallen asleep? How many of us sometimes can't even utter the word, not because of our inner groanings of pain, but because we are simply exhausted from all the worldly things we've done in the day. And But here's what I have left, God. But the word says, seek ye first. First. The Bible talks about first fruits. When you get paid, who gets your money first? First fruits doesn't mean that you tithe, right? First fruits mean you tithe First, putting God first. It is he who gave you the power to get wealth. Without God giving us his spirit, we wouldn't be standing here. I can't tell you the amount of times over the past few months where a patient has coded and the very doctors would say, all we can do now is pray. But did we pray first? We're saving God for last, and all he desires is to be our first. Put him first on your list, for it is written that if you seek ye first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then, then school will be added, husbands will be added, wives will be added, 
Retirement will be great. People will be saved. People will be fed. People who lost will be restored. You will start to be an element of peace wherever you go. It's your job in your home, even on the streets. People will start to be drawn to you. They will see you, but they will experience God when you seek him first. There will be shifting in the atmosphere because when you walk in, you will command it. When you step in, the enemy will have nothing to do but quiver under your feet. He wouldn't be able to stand against the power that came in with you because you sought God first. In a world where everybody wants to be great and everybody wants to be first, let us as Christians put our God first, for it is written. I encourage you, saints, to make a new list. And on that list, put God first. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to say a word of thanks to God right now as I ask that he speak today and not myself. I wanted to put him first. There's no point in saying something and not abiding by it. All of what I said today was not what I wrote down. I, I merely used the guidelines he gave me. So I thank you, Lord, for using me in the way you saw fit because I put you first. And during this moment of putting God first, we invite each and every one watching, listening. We invite you to Christian discipleship. The information is there. I will refer you to our website. And also you could email at UMC first mv at verizon.net you could call in at 914-668-3334 if you feel that a christian discipleship is for you if god has spoken to you today if you are ready to put everything aside and put god first if you believe that it is written because it is call in email Speak with one of our lovely people here and seek God with your whole heart. Put him first. We thank you. We will now be doing uh, the blessing. And you could also, I'm sorry, you could also look at the screen if you're able to. The information I just read to you is also on your screen for those who are on Zoom, for those who are on Facebook. We will not be blessing God. We talked about the two types of blessing with our uh, offering after a word of prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dear God, we thank you for these gifts that we humbly offer back to you. We know that they represent only a small portion of the abundance with which you have blessed us. We ask that these gifts be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. Please bless all those who gave, as well as those who did not have to give. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so as we close today, thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for coming in person, on Zoom, and on Facebook. If something about the word today has spoken to your heart, seek the list that God gave you. May the Lord continue to bless and keep you all and make his face shine upon you all. He is continually gracious to us all. He, he has given us his peace. Let's walk in it this week. Amen. <laughs>